guys! So it is book haul time. I have a pile of books to share with you and let's get into it, shall we? So the first book I have is A Proof and I am about a third of the way through this one so I thought I'd talk about it first and that is American War by Omar El Akkad and this is published by Picador so I picked up this proof copy from work and I am so enjoying this book, guys. The book is set in a future America when the Second Civil War breaks out. Uh, we begin our story uh, after the Civil War War has ended um, but then we go back in time and follow one of the protagonists throughout this war and it's also interspersed with them um, like fake uh, complementary historical documents to go alongside the narrative and the civil war is partially the result of a disagreement between sustainable fuels but like with anything it's a combination of lots of things and um, it's complex and it, it spreads rapidly across the country and it's obviously an incredibly intense story but it's actually incredibly easy and quick to read but I've also been speeding through it because it's just so engaging and I'm so intrigued to see how it goes I think the structure is one of my favorite things about it and I, I just think it's a really great book so far I'm intrigued to see where it goes and from people who have finished it I've heard nothing but praise so this is the first book I have to haul I then have a few books that were sent to me by publishers the first one is Children of the World Stories by Alexander Wine and this is a collection of short stories and I've heard a lot of people compare this to the uh, UK TV show Black Mirror which I have watched some episodes of but I have to say I don't know what it is about that show in particular it gives me nightmares it is just so intense but it's very clever um, horror that kind of comments on modern day issues um, a lot of it's on kind of technology but it's incredibly disturbing so part of me is really excited for this collection of short stories but the other part of me is terrified. I think I might be able to handle those kind of stories in a written form though better than I do on screen which is what I find in general with kind of horror-esque stories. From the blur of this collection in particular seems to blend those technological themes with um, themes of uh, procreation and children and families and um, how, where all of that is going so I, I'm really intrigued to see how this one goes. It was sent to me by text publishing after I said I was really keen to read it. The next Next two were also sent to me by publishers and I wasn't expecting to receive them in the post but they are both books that I will definitely give a read and the first one is Broken River by J. Robert Lennon and this is in fact a bit of a ghost story. This one is published by Serpent's Tale and I'll read you the blurb on the back because I had never heard of this book before it was sent to me in the post but I was immediately sure that I wanted to read it when I did. It says following a string of affairs Carl and Eleanor are giving their marriage one last shot. They're moving with their 12 year old daughter Irina from Brooklyn to a newly renovated apparently charming old house near the upstate New York town of Broken River. Before their arrival, the house stood empty for over a decade. The reason is no secret. Twelve years previously, a brutal double murder took place there. A young couple killed in front of their child. The crime was never solved and most locals consider the house cursed. Um, I, what it does remind me of a little bit is a television show I used to watch after saying I'm not great with kind of horror things on TV but there was something about this show that had me completely hooked. It was called A Haunting, it was an American television show and each episode had interviewed families who had experienced real hauntings if you believe in hauntings I'm not sure I do but I, I like the TV show um, and then it would also do uh, recreations with actors of their experiences and I don't know what it was but it was a very very engaging show and that's what this kind of reminds me of. I then have a book that I have been excited about for the longest time and it is not out yet but it will be soon and that is Franklin's Flying Bookshop by Jen Campbell. You all know Jen is a good friend of mine but that doesn't change how genuinely excited I am about this book. I have been reading uh, this story for a few months now, Jen has, has shared um, some of it with me so it's so wonderful to finally see what is a really beautiful children's story about a dragon called Franklin and his friend Luna and uh, how they kind of spread the joy of reading and um, show the townspeople who are all really afraid of Franklin that they need not be. You know, a combination of books and acceptance, what more can you want? It's so nice to see that accompanied with the beautiful illustrations by Katie Harnett. I will show you one of them here. 
this is Franklin and Luna meeting. Oh, it's, just, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. I think Jen's words and Katie's illustrations match perfectly and this has been produced by Thames and Hudson. I then have a book I bought myself and that is The Pedagogy of the Oppressed by Paolo Friere and this is kind of classic non-fiction. It was written in 1970 and it's on education and actually when I saw this in the bookshop I, I had to pick it up because it was on a topic that I have thought a lot about over the years but particularly have been thinking about recently um, and it's about the importance of uh, education being accessible to people from all social backgrounds whether they have money or not I, mean, I obviously don't know exactly what this book explores in full but that's certainly something I've been thinking about and that's definitely themes that this one touches on um, it's still ridiculous. In fact, I think it's getting worse, <laughs> the inaccessibility of education and how expensive education is and it's something I've had to deal with myself in my own life. I mean, you all know I work um, almost full time whilst doing my PhD part time um, and things are tight but I make them work and I am a lot more fortunate than many others so it's, it is a struggle and it's something I wish we could improve upon as a society because I think education, um, not that everybody has to go to university but all stages of education are incredibly important and for the populace of a country to be educated is so important it helps us make informed decisions and it shouldn't be something that's exclusive to people with money. Unfortunately there have always been those that prefer to have education as something exclusive to those with money and however but I think it's good to keep up the discussion and I thought I would read this classic on that topic. I'll read the back so you get more of an idea of what um, the author is talking about. It says, Arguing that education is freedom, Paolo Freire's radical international classic contends that traditional teaching styles keep the poor powerless by treating them as passive, silent recipients of knowledge. That's just the first sentence, but I think it gives you a taster and it's a very short book published by Penguin, so I should be able to read this one quite quickly and, and let you know what I think of it. I was then sent a book by Hockey Books, which I wasn't expecting but I have decided to keep around because I've actually read something else by this author and that is Genuine Fraud by E. Lockhart. I think We Were Liars is pretty much you know a booktube institution whether you've read it or not you will have probably seen someone do a review of it and um, it came out a few years ago and it, it was just everywhere and I did read it and I enjoyed it it was a fast-paced, fun YA book with um, lots of twists and turns and a good mystery and I, yeah, really enjoyed it at the time. And now that I have another E. Lockhart in my home, I am definitely up for giving her another try. And lastly is another book that I have been incredibly excited for for a while now and that is Plum by Holly McNish. Holly McNish is a performance poet. I first came encounter with Holly McNish a few years ago with uh, Nicola over at Robotnik when she performed some of her poetry live at a Canning Gate event and it it was absolutely fantastic um, and since then I have been keeping up with her work and listening to her poetry which continues to be amazing um, and I am so excited to have her new collection. This is definitely one for fans of Kate Tempest and for those of you that are perhaps looking for more poets to get into I think Holly McNish is somebody that very very many people will enjoy so I would highly recommend checking out her work if you haven't already. Those are all the books I have to show you in this haul however I hope you have enjoyed it. Do let me know if you have any thoughts on any of the books I've mentioned in this video or any of the things I've talked about really. I'd love to know if anybody else watched A Haunting. You know, that was just one of those weird shows that I don't think I knew anybody else that ever watched it. Um, but that's all for now. Until next time guys, happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye. It is warm in London right now. So warm.